Welcome guys and yeah well thank you for actually clicking on the video. This is gonna be a long one, it's gonna be a two-parter. Um but you will learn a lot, especially beginners will learn a lot. And I also wanna thank you a lot about supporting me in even if you just subscribe or you know my Patreon members and members on my own website. I really, really, really am happy with that. I like I'm so grateful and I even upgraded my um my equipment a little bit. I gotta be honest, YouTube and Patreon didn't really cover this money for this stuff, but <laughs> I'm happy to invest, that's okay, and I hope you guys can hear it, because it's a really, really good microphone, and I'm really happy with it. Um, but yeah, thanks for everything, and let's just go on and uh, create something cool. See ya. So as you guys can see, the inspiration for this animation comes from Mikael Eidenberg. And I will leave the links down below so you can see him on Instagram and all that good stuff. But uh, let's thank him for his cool animation and I really wanted to delve in and teach you guys how to create something like this in Blender. So let's jump in. So let's create the moon. The first thing that we are going to do is we are going to delete the default cube and add a UV sphere. Then this UV sphere is a bit blocky. We are going to click on W and do Shade Smooth. So now we have a nice smooth shading on here and we can create a modifier which is called the Subdivision Surface. So now we have some extra geometry to work with. This moon looks quite detailed, but it is actually very simple to make. We don't need to model anything. We are just going to use our textures. So go to Shading and inside Shading we can click on New. Now this is going to be of course our moon texture, so moon. And we want to use a displacement. We are going to use this displacement node here, but let's look what it does if I just use displacement. If I use a displacement, and um, let's put a Voronoi texture in here, so Voronoi, bam. The distance goes into the height, let me move this a bit around. You can see that we have a very cool um, yeah, bump map. And even if I click on viewport shading rendered. Yeah, we still have the bump map, but this is not a displacement, okay? That is a difference. And the way that I'm going to do that, I'm going to change our render engine from EV to cycles. And when I change to cycles, I will also like to render with my GPU and when you use your GPU, you need to make your tiles in performance a bit bigger. So 256 by 256. Then I like to go here into my material properties and look for settings. And underneath surface, we have displacement. Now it is set at bump only. If I go to my rendered viewport shading and change my bump only to displacement only, you can see that now we have a real displacement happening. You can also do displacement and bump if you want to. Displacement and bump is here. So let's go back to our material preview and we can see that, yeah, they of course don't match up, but that huge bump is very easily changed if you just put the scale down. We're gonna do that later because actually when we just look at our bump map, we kinda can see what we can do with our displacement right so we're gonna change this and the first thing that i like to do is create some craters so i do like the voronois texture but i like to change it a little bit and what i like to change is i like to put a color ramp in between the voronois texture and the displacement texture and play around with these sliders so if we move this white stop to the left you can see that we are changing our geometry here and what we can see is that we are kind of creating these craters. That is what we want, right? So I like my craters to be, yeah, I think they're cool around here. This size seems to be fitting me. Then what I like to do is when you have an impact on a moon or any other, maybe even on the earth, it doesn't matter. When you have an impact from a meteorite, you can see that we have, of course, this hole, but the outside is also higher. So if we go back now into Blender, you can see that if we grab another stop here, and this stop is gonna be a little bit darker, and put it in front of this one, you can see that now we have a little bump here, right? So um, yeah, 
You just need to make it a bit darker. If you make it um, the same color, let's say, oh, same color, you can see that there's no difference. And the more I put it towards black, you'll be able to see that this gets deeper. Uh, we don't want it to be too much, uh, so just a little bit will be fine. But around here is fine. The problem now is we do have our craters, which is very cool, but they just don't really look interesting and they're way too, yeah, sharp, I guess, right? So let's put this F1 to smooth F1. And now you can see that it's way smoother, but it's still a bit too sharp here. So let's also change in the color ramp, the linear to ease. And now it kind of eases in. And you can still play a little bit around with these if you would like to. But you can see that now, because it eases in, it creates more of a, yeah, crater type, which is more pleasing to us. Then, when we have our craters done, you can still change the scale. You can create more of them, less, and you can also play around with this randomness. Maybe you want them to be a bit less random or more. That is all up to you. But let's say that, um, let me move the bit around here. Let's say that this is what I want. Now, I don't really want this other part, just this part next to it, to be a very smooth sphere. It doesn't make any sense, right? So what we're gonna do is, I'm just gonna move this a bit down and disconnect this for a second. Now add a Musgrave texture and put the height into the height of the displacement so we can create some noise on top of this sphere. So here we have our Musgrave texture. I like to go here to multi-fractal and play around with the scale a little bit. So maybe one a bit bigger. Uh, I like a lot of detail because you can see that creates a lot of this more very small and defined details. And I like to also play a little bit around with the dimension. Just put it a bit lower. You can see that that even creates more details in here. So yeah, just play around with these options. Don't Try to do exactly what I'm doing. You can also play around with maybe the FBM. Still looks quite the same, right? But the other ones, like the rigid one, is totally different, as you can see here. But uh, yeah, just play around with them. Then you can see that this is a bit too strong, right? We want it to be a bit bumpy, but not super extreme. So I am going to add a RGB mix node in here. So a mix RGB. And you can mix the Musgrave texture with this color and because it is a flat color if you move it over there so give that a bit more strength you can see that now it kind of flattens out right and that is what we want we don't want too much of this bumpiness happening a little bit is okay but just not too much very very cool then i want to join these two together because i want it to look like this but i of course want my craters back so if we just duplicate this one here or create a new mix RGB node, put it in between the displacement and this mix shader of the Musgrave texture, then connect the color ramp of the Veronois texture in color two. Now we can mix these two, but let's not mix them, let's use a multiply. And here you can see that now we get some really good results, and this is really starting to look like what we want. So let's go back to this displacement here, because now if we click on render, you can see that it is just a bit too much. First of all, we might want a little bit more of the subdivisions in here, so you can move this viewport and of course the render also up, which creates yeah more geometry for our displacement map to work with, which is great, but it is just a bit too much, right? It's too strong. So if you put the scale to maybe 0.2, um, yeah, it doesn't matter. You may have to play a little bit around, but if you put the scale to a different value, so if you put it lower, you can see that it is less strong. So now we are really starting to get what our little planet looks like. So here we have our little moon. Um, yeah, just keep playing with this and you can also still go back here, make it sharper, uh, less sharp. And yeah, just play around with these options. And you can of course still go back to any of the options that you had. You want maybe more of this. Uh, Musgrave texture in here. Maybe you want your um, yeah your craters to be a bit bigger, so you can move this up or down. Um, you can still keep playing around with this, but you can also change the color if you would like to. So the base color, I am going to make a little bit bluish, 
Why blue? Well, I want a little bit of a, um, yeah, a colder color in here because I know later on we're gonna use some fire from the engine and colder and warm colors kind of accentuate each other, right? They work great together in renders. Then um, you can also play around with the roughness. Do you want it very shiny or do you want it a little bit more dull? That is totally fine. This is all up to you. And this is kind of how we create our little planet. So I encourage you to just keep playing with these options a little bit so you get kind of what you are looking for. Everything is possible. Then make sure you call this moon and save this file so we can go on and create our little rocket. So we have our little moon, but now it's time to create our rocket. So right click in the collections and create a new collection named rocket. For the rocket, we need multiple objects. So that's why we put it inside a collection. Let's hide the moon for right now. And we're going to add a UV sphere. And this is going to be our rocket. I will go back to my solid view and do scale Z. So now I only scale around the Z axis. We can choose yeah, some kind of a shape which is elongated. Then delete the bottom part. And we can focus on this shape. So extrude this bottom edge loop downwards. And here you can see that we're kind of having a nice shape, right? Um, but it is not filled in the bottom. So we want to fill this up. We can do this in multiple ways. The best way is to just click on extrude. So E. Then I click right click so it snaps back. But the extrusion is still there. And the extrusion is selected. So now if I click on M, I can merge this extrusion at center. Right? So yeah, that is one little technique that I use a lot. Because if you extrude something and then right click, it just snaps back. But you can see if I now click on G, it is still there. Right? So keep that in mind. It is still there. So awesome. It's filled up. And now we can start to think about making this look a little bit more interesting. Because if we just use a subdivision surface and maybe a shade smooth, you can see that it doesn't really look that interesting. Plus, if we just use a subdivision surface, this in the bottom here gets very smooth. We don't want that. So I am going to add a bevel in the bottom. Ctrl B creates a bevel. The problem is, you might see it, if we create a bevel, one part of it is very elongated. That is because we changed the size of this with scale Z in the beginning. And now the scale is not really how it used to be anymore. So click on Ctrl A and apply the scale. And now the bevel and other modifiers should work the way that they always do. So Ctrl B, and you can see now the bevel at least works good. Scroll up or down to create more or less edge loops. And this seems to be great what we have here. Yeah, that's good. Now I like to create a bevel also here. So Ctrl B, create a bevel, but I only want one of these extra edge loops in the middle. So make it a bit smaller. And with this edge loop, we are going to select this edge loop in the middle with Alt Select. Then scale the bit down. Just scale the bit down, that's it. We're going to do the same. Um, let's do it around here. Ctrl B, around here, and then select the middle one and scale the bit down. Why do we do this? Well, if we now add a modifier called bevel modifier and put this bevel modifier above the subdivision surface. Now you can see that we create some bevels, but we don't want these bevels to work at every single one of these edges. We only want them to work on these side ones. And a simple way to do this is to just put this at angle because these like edges here are at a higher degree than 30, then they get beveled. And the other parts, which are not at an angle of 30 or more, they will get nice and smooth, as you can see here. So only these edge loops are now beveled. So this is kind of the base of our rocket. So we can rename this to base. And you can even rescale this if you maybe want it a bit longer. Uh, that's all up to you. What you want is make sure you apply the scale after it. But um, yeah, that is really the base of our rocket. Now what we want to create is a nice a nozzle in the bottom or like an engine, something where the flames come out of. We are going to add a cylinder, move the bit down and then scale it down as well. Um, choose around a size, which is quite big because it's quite cartoony. Then scale this bottom part up and move it a little bit up as well. Something like this will work great. In my opinion, maybe we want to make it even a bit more smaller, but this should be good. Then for this part, this nozzle, 
we want to delete this bottom face and this face as well. And I want to extrude this so we make it, yeah, solid. The way that I like to do it is click on E to extrude, then scale, shift Z. So if you do shift Z, then it does not scale around the Z axis. Because if we just scale it, you can see that it gets bigger and smaller also in the Z axis. And we don't want that. So scale, shift, set, and it only goes around the X and the Y axis. Then again, for this one, use a bevel modifier set to angle. Uh, we can put the segments a bit higher and the amount lower. Then a subdivision surface. So yeah, if you put more segments, you can see that this bevel gets more um, edge loops around it. And for the amount, you can make it sharper or uh, yeah, less sharp these bevels, right? So that is why we do this. Then click on Alt H and here we have our little nozzle and we have our yeah rocket base. So nozzle's ready. Let's rename this nozzle. Okay, so here we have our base, we have our nozzle and now we need to create our wings. So let's create a plane. So just the plane, rotate it and then put it down uh, here. Oh, I need to put this back at medium. Then what we want to do is we want to create a very basic um, kind of wing shape. So literally the only thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to move these a bit inwards here, extrude it, rotate it a bit, even scale it a bit down again, maybe like two or three times. And you will see that this is very, very basic, right? So at this point, it looks very bad. I do know that, but we are going to add some modifiers and it will instantly look better. So the first thing that we need is we need a solidify modifier because now it's just a piece of paper. So here, let's get a solidify modifier in here. Bam. Then the thickness higher. The problem is if you just put the thickness higher in the solidify modifier is that it goes to one side, but then it's not in the middle anymore. So I'm going to put the offset at zero. And now you will see that it just starts to expand from the middle. So that is good. Then the next thing that I want is a bevel. So a bevel modifier. And why a bevel modifier? Because I want these edges here on the outside to be crisp. But I want these edges uh, here to be nice and smooth. And we can do that with the bevel modifier. So um, yeah, amount. This seems to be good. Then we can add a subdivision surface. So now we have more geometry, which is great, but we still have these corners in here and we want it nice and smooth. So inside the bevel modifier, I'm going to put the limit method at angle. And now you see that some parts of it are nice and smooth because there is no bevel being applied to those edges anymore. But this edge here, for instance, still has a, a very sharp edge. So if we put this angle up, Inside our bevel modifier, you can see that at one point, so above the 60 degrees in this case, it starts to be nice and smooth. And this is what we want. So you want it, um, just put it a bit higher, maybe 70 or 80 degrees. That should be totally fine. And now we can still go inside of our model. So still inside of our middle model, and we can change everything around. So one thing that you can see is that this part here is still, yeah, very sharp. And even if I put my angle all the way up, that just creates more yeah, problems, to be honest. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another edge loop here in the middle and just move this a bit down. Because I move this down, the angle of this part here will be changed and now there is no bevel formed anymore. Um, cool. So kind of start, starting to look good. So I'm going to put uh, one more segment in here just to make it a bit sharper. And for now, you should just play a little bit with the shapes that we have here. Um, and then you should be totally fine. So I'm just going to move it a bit more inwards. This part as well. Yeah, we're starting to get that. Let, let's say this is done. You guys can play with it as long as you want, of course. You know that. Uh, but this is kind of a, yeah, a wing shape. So we can rename this as well as wing or whatever you want to name it. Make sure you give it a shade smooth. Now we want to duplicate this two more times, right? We want three of these wings on the sides. So you can do this in two ways. You can 
uh, first of all, make sure that your 3D curse is in the middle. Then change the pivot point here to 3D cursor, duplicate the wing, and rotate it around the Z axis for 120 degrees. Bam. Then again, duplicate that one, rotate Z 120. So that is what you can do. The problem is, if you now change this one, like you see like, oh, I kind of want the shape to be a bit different. If you then change the thickness or whatever, it only moves, like it only changes on one of the wings because they are duplicates and they are not the same model. So if you want another way, which I use a lot, then you just add a modifier instead of duplicating it. So let me hide these modifiers for right now and we're gonna add an array modifier. So an array modifier, as you can see, arrays a model. And you can do the count up or down. Um, in this case, we want three, right? We want three of these models because one, two, three. And the next thing that you want to do is you want to make the factor at zero. They are still there, but they are just inside of each other. As you can see here, right? They just go inside of each other. Then we are going to add a empty. So empty. Let's scale this empty bit up so we can see it. And also make sure you apply the scale. So Ctrl A, scale, then select your wing, and we are going to do object offset. So we are going to select this empty. You can see that our wing is doing all kinds of weird stuff, and that is because our origin here is not in the middle from where this empty is. So we just need to apply the scale with Ctrl A, apply the rotation, and apply the location. So now again, it seems like, yeah, they're gone. No, they're all inside of this model. And that is what we want because now if we rotate this empty, you can see that they just move with it. So now we rotate the empty around the Z axis for 120 degrees. And here we have our uh, yeah, wings. This seems like a big step, but it's really handy because now if I just want to change one thing, let's say in this bevel, whatever, it changes on all of them. And as you can imagine, we can put the count higher inside the error modifier. We can use a Boolean, so we can Boolean multiple things at the same time. So this is a really, really powerful technique that I use a lot. Now we need to create our window. So I'm clicking on one, and I'm going to add a circle. Let's rotate this around the X axis. And let me actually look here. Choose this size is fine. I need to put this back at median. And then here. So, very cool. You want to rotate this a little bit. So I'm going to rotate it something around here. Something around that should be good. And then we are going to fill this up. So extrude, scale down. So around here. Then extrude again. Then we're going to right click so it snaps back. And then click on M and merge it at center. Now I can create some extra edge loops on here. And then we can add a modifier. And we can do the shrink wrap modifier. So we are essentially going to do as target this base. And you will see that now our circle, our window that we created, snaps or wraps around this model. The thing is we are kind of losing this nice circular form. So if we put this wrap method at project. If in your case it doesn't really snap on the surface, you might uh, choose one of these axes. So click on Z or whatever. Okay, that sometimes is the problem. Then we can see that it kind of intersects with our base. We don't want that. So I'm going to put the offset a little bit up. Don't do it too high, okay? Just a little bit. Now we have our window. So we can rename the circle to window. And we can also do a nice shade smooth. So W, shade smooth. Now we want to duplicate this window, Shift D, and then this duplicate is going to be our window frame. So window frame, then click on top, and from this window frame, we're gonna delete these vertices. So we just have this part left, okay? You can also click on Shift H to hide everything else. And um, now we want to add some extra modifiers. So first a solidifier modifier, bam. We want to make it a bit more thick here. Then I like to add a bevel modifier. So I'm going to put the segments up a little bit and put this amount way lower because it lost, lost a lot of its shape. And then also limit method should be at angle, right? And add a subdivision surface. It's just like what we did with all these other parts. Then 
Alt H to unhide everything else and we can see what we have here. So I think it's a bit too thick. So just go back to your solidify modifier and make that a little bit less thick. But this is our window frame. So we have our base, our window frame, our window and our wings and of course the nozzle down there. So these are essentially the parts that we need. And let's create also some of the materials. And for these materials, we just want to select, let's select the wings first. Click on new and we want to do rocket wings. Then we can start to think about what we want. I want a very simple and easy material. I just want it a bit more gray. So here, a bit grayish. And let's do the roughness at 0.6. So this is literally enough for what I want. I want them to look like this. Then we can duplicate this material, okay? So I can just go here, do rocket wings. And actually, I would like this as well to be this color. But if you want, you can make it a bit darker. So you just click on this duplicate. Then you can change this name to nozzle. And you can make this, for instance, a little bit darker. Right? It's that easy. So here we have also, where is our window? Here, our window. Go here, go back to the nozzle, click on 2. And then just change this name to window. And I want this window to be a little bit more blue, right? So here we have a nice blue color. Then we have the window frame. I actually want to be the same color as the nozzle, so I'm just going to do nozzle there. Then we have this base. So here, click on the nozzle again, click on the duplicate, bam, and this can be the rocket base. Let's do base red, because I want a base red and a base white. So this is going to be rocket base red, and we're going to just do a nice red color. Um, let me choose around here. Maybe a little bit less. And then I want two colors on this, actually. So let's look. The first thing that I want is the rocket base red, but I want this middle part to be white. So if we go into our material properties, then we can click on a plus here. You can see that now we can use two different materials for one model. We can click on new or we can open one of the other ones that we have, nozzle, but I'm going to duplicate it again because I don't want to change the nozzle at all. So here I'm going to change this to rocket base white. Then I'm gonna just going to change this to a more of a white color and you can see that nothing changed. That is because we need to assign the material to our geometry. So just go into edit mode. We're going to select this middle one. Click on Ctrl plus to expand your selection till they're around here. And then click on assign. So here you can see that we have this red material on these parts and the white material in the middle. Very cool. So if you click on Alt H, you can see that we have textured this cute little rocket.